Hi, this is Nate Nomad. There's a little Bobby here. And this video is going to be about the portable air conditioner, the type that sits off the ground, has the single vent tube that goes out the window. I'm going to show you how to set that up in your van a very efficient way. I've honestly seen a lot of videos out there and many of them are very inefficient. I'm going to show you how to avoid all the little pitfalls that other people are doing in order to make yours also very efficient. There are so many important things to consider when you're buying a portable air conditioner, like will it fit behind the seat? Will you be able to see the rear view mirror clearly? This right here is my air conditioner. This is the back of my passenger seat. I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see from my perspective. I'm five foot eight, by the way, so if you're taller than I am, you'll see just fine. But if you're shorter than I am, well, this air conditioning unit is one of the shortest ones out there. Most of the time I can see just fine out the window as well. Uh, you may need to fold the seat all the way down in order to see safely and change lanes. This air conditioning unit is 30 inches tall. It is also 12 inches by 12 inches width and depth. It barely fits. It comes with a remote control, which is important if you want to lay down in your bed and change the temperature. I'll put a link in the description below for this air conditioner. It does have flaps that adjust up and down and side to side, but that's actually irrelevant and I'll show you why later. This is the view from the outside. Coming around the door here, you can see the plastic vent tube. Down below is the drain spout for the water. When the moisture level is high, there's an automatic indicator, a noise that goes off to let you know when to drain it. And I'll show you how I installed the rest up here. This is how I have it plugged in, through a very thick gauge extension cord running all the way to the back and out down the bottom for shore power. I'm sure you can come up with a much craftier, more hidden, efficient way. This is important, it's 800 BTUs. It's a very small space in the van, you don't need much. So the less you have, the less power consumption. It costs about 40 to $50 a month to run it almost continuously. The weight is important. I'm going to show you this. It's about 50 pounds empty. To make the adapter piece in the window, I first use a piece of cardboard, trace out an outline, shove it in there between the window and the seal to make sure it works. I put little dots at the bottom right there where you can see, it tells me where to raise the window each time. If you're wondering, those magnets with cloth around them, they're just to hold on the reflectix so I don't keep scratching the paint. I used quarter inch plywood, which works perfectly, nice and snug between the two and holds it nice and firm. Just a reminder, many of these things I'm actually showing you right now are inefficient. And I'm going to show you how it works and then how I improved on this system. I use Reflectix to block the sun, first of all and foremost, to prevent fighting against the heat so much when I'm trying to cool the van. Now, setting it up this way, I'll show you why, is highly inefficient. Now, taking the temperature, you see it's 54 degrees coming out of the air conditioner. It super cools the driver's seat area, and then it slowly gets hotter and hotter as it moves the back of the van towards the bed. This is the exhaust coming out at 110 degrees. This is the plastic tube, and it's 105 degrees radiant temperature in that front area, so it's heating and cooling that front area at the same time. And again, it's inefficient. I tried to change that by putting in some Reflectix, curled it around the edge here, as you can see, to bring that cold air to the back. But again, it goes up to the 70s, warmer and warmer as it moves its way back to the van. You can see that in the midsection here, it's 85 degrees, and in the bed area, it gets up to 90 degrees. My next idea was to put the air conditioner in the middle of the van and isolate the hot tube to the front of the van. This was a significant improvement to cool down the middle section and the bed area of the van, isolating the heat tube that radiates all that tremendous heat into the front cab area. But this section, as I'll show you, 
wasn't working for me either. One of the reasons is that I don't like to lock this thing up when I'm traveling and moving and blocking the slider door area. I also use that section for my bathroom whenever I'm going to bed at night. I replaced the inefficient radiant heat plastic tube with this aluminum tube, which wasn't compatible with the plastic ring, so I used aluminum tape to secure it all together, and other things as well. I also conveniently made sure that the aluminum tube was much longer than the original plastic one, so I could open up the door all the way. I added also a 3 quarter inch inside diameter drain hose for the water, which fits securely over the end here, and also the plug fits perfectly in the end of the tube. When the indicator tells you it's full, it makes it easy to drain the water. Being that I only have 68 square feet in my entire home, every square inch matters, so it's important that I keep that air conditioner in the front of the van. Now to take the temperature and measure the difference between the plastic tube and the upgraded aluminum one. 87 degrees. There's a huge difference between 105 degrees coming off that tube and 87 degrees. Now that the AC isn't competing with the radiant heat of that old tube, I used that plastic tube to guide specifically the air exactly where I wanted it to go in the back of the van. Separating the front from the back here, this tube guides the air crisp, cold, exactly where I want it to go. And that is a big difference. Nice strong air coming out and the bed area and the whole van is nice and cool in comparison. Please, please just click that like button for me if it helped you at all or if you thought my dog was cute. Subscribe, I have tons of other helpful videos. Check them out. A much more advanced version of this to avoid shore power is to use a generator in the back. Use the generator to tap into your fuel tank for extended stay boondocking, but that's for another video.